Hats off to the folks at Zelf Stoveworks for their innovative designs on the original Zelf Starlight alcohol stove. It inspired me to build my own alcohol stove using some of their concepts to fit my needs for high altitude performance. This stove design uses some of the Zelf Starlight stove components in a much smaller scale with traditional alcohol stove burning fuel ports. Without these fuel vapor burning ports, the stove would not burn. I've tinkered with dozens of alcohol stove designs and permutations in an effort to maximize fuel burn time with the shortest possible two cup water boil time. One of the issues I have with tests on the internet is most of them are with one cup of water. Most of the meals that I hydrate in the high country when I'm backpacking require two cups of water. So all my tests include two cups of water as a boil time benchmark. From lowest to highest in efficiency is the capillary pressurized stove, the common photon pressurized stove, the turbojet pressurized stove, also has fiberglass on the inside to prevent any spilling. And the most efficient design is what I call my high altitude modified Zelf Starlight or HAMS Starlight for short. To make the stove you'll need these tools and materials. A soft hammer, a marker, a pin vise that holds a .03 inch or three one hundredths of an inch drill bit, a stick that will be used to mix and apply the JB weld, common brass grommet kit, two 12 ounce soda cans, about a 10 inch section of masking tape, household insulation, fiberglass cloth, and some stainless steel screening from a common kitchen strainer. First, mark a 30 millimeter line from the bottom of the can. And on the second can, mark a 20 millimeter line from the bottom of the can. There are many ways to cut the can using a razor blade or a Dremel tool. I just puncture a hole in it and use a common pair of shop scissors On the 20 millimeter or shorter piece, take some sandpaper or steel wool and rough up the edges. This will help the JB weld adhere to both sides when we glue the two pieces together. Mark the center of the shorter piece so we can drill a pilot hole to accept the brass grommet. It's okay that the hole is rough. Sometimes not holding it steady will give you an oblong hole. As long as we can get the grommet through there, that's all we care about. Using a scrap board as your pounding base, put the flanged piece of the brass grommet on the grommet die. Put the stove top upright over the flange. Place the 
finishing brass ring. Give the punch a few good pounds to curl that flange down over the finishing ring and cinch the two pieces together. There. Doesn't move. And a nice round hole in the middle. Measure a section of fiberglass cloth about one inch larger than the diameter of the can. From the stainless steel mesh, cut a piece, it can be either square or round, just enough to cover the middle hole that we just punched in the middle of the top of the can. This happens to be about an inch and a half by an inch and a half. The top of the can will slide inside the bottom of the can when we fit it all together. To make that easier, about three quarters of the way up from the bottom of the rim to the top of the crease, and just bend inward just a little bit, about every half inch, make a bend and twist it inward. Test fit the two pieces together before we do the final assembly. It should fit quickly and easily and snugly. Don't push all the way until we're finally done. Now we're ready to install the fiberglass wicking. Notice how this is striated and layered. Let's keep that integrity as we build the stove. I cut few one-inch pieces and I'll layer it in here like so. That aids in wicking the vapors to the top. You don't need much. Notice I only used two pieces that were one inch thick by about four or five inches long. Both fit nicely inside there. Next we'll install the fiberglass cloth. I like to round the edges a little bit, which helps make it neater when it's installed. Next, place the fiberglass on top and use something like a flat screwdriver to punch the edges down against the wall of the stove. Mix up some 24 hour cure JB weld and apply it to the inside about a quarter inch down. Don't worry if you get some on the fiberglass, that's okay. With the JB weld applied on the inside, place a piece of stainless steel mesh on top and gently assemble the entire unit. Take a paper towel to wipe off excess JB weld. I've experimented with many hole configurations on the top. Here are seven holes on the inside with seven holes on the outside. The outside holes are in smaller diameter. Burned fine, but the flames were too short for my liking. 
I've found the optimum configuration is just simply to put seven or eight holes on the inside. Here I've drilled them in an angle so that it creates a whirling vortex as it burns upward. Place the masking tape around the edge of the completed stove. Cut it where the two pieces meet. The entire circumference of a 12 ounce can is approximately 210 millimeters. That's easily divisible by three, which gives me seven holes. Eight holes is fine. I wouldn't go much more. So every 30 millimeters, I make a mark. And I'll transfer those marks to the can so I can drill my holes. Transfer the markings on the tape to the inside where the inner pan meets the vertical wall. Again, seven or eight holes is sufficient. More than that, and it reduces the flame size. Use the hand drill to drill a hole at each marking. You can angle them so you can create a vortex. Drilled holes when finished should look something like this. Remove the tape. Keep that for later in case you build a couple more stoves. You already got it pre-marked. It's easy to keep that aside. When it's dry, 24 hours later, take some steel wool if you prefer. rub off the paint. The completed stove looks like that. For this burn experiment, I'm using a backpacker's lightweight pot that has a built-in heat exchanger. Sometimes you just can't build a better mousetrap, and in this case, this pot really helps out with the efficiency of burning in high altitudes. Here I have 30 milliliters, or approximately one ounce, of heat, or you can use denatured alcohol.